Welcome to the Wallaway. This is Imran Nanlawala, and I'm here with Noman Hussein, the founder of Transform Ability. Brother Noman, how are you? Uh, good, good. Thanks, uh, thanks for uh, having this conversation. No, I'm, it's a pleasure of mine. I've been looking forward to having it. So let's go straight into it. What is Transform Ability? Why did you find the need to create such an organization? So Transform Ability is about transformation, people, companies. Our main focus is companies and transforming them, helping them to transform to this digital age or the age where there's massive disruption right now. And, and you can understand that. So I worked in companies before and I thought there's a need for this type of work. And this is, the, this is why I created this, uh, this company. Our main focus is to helping company to improve innovate and um, develop the human capital. And we, we work with companies and we use certain tools, okay? And they can be lean manufacturing, world-class manufacturing tools to improve them. But also, if you can imagine that these days, digital or industry 4.0 tools, industry 4.0 tools are becoming important as well. So- Can you define that real quick? What is industry 4.0? So industry 4.0 is about the connected factory, how things are communicating and how data is uh, coming into the picture and how this is driving improvement and efficiency uh, at the workplace. Can you give us a, a, an example of a connected tool, like something so that the, the common listener can understand? So in the factory or at the workplace, what are some of these connections? So in the factory or workplace, there is a tremendous amount of data is being created, okay? And traditionally, we're not able to use this data to our use. So we cannot react to that data, and then you can predict using that data. So now with the data analytics, we can look at this data, we can process this data, and not only we can react, okay, which is one thing, but we can also predict. So there is a trend, for example, in which a machine is working in a certain way, and we can predict through this working if the machine is working in the optimal way. And when the machines start to degrade through this data collection, for example, if you're collecting vibration data, this will help us to predict if the machine is, there's a degradation in the machine. And through these type of techniques, where humans and machines are connected and machine and machines are connected, okay? And this is how we can improve efficiency. So the bottom line is efficiency. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's also saving money, being more productive. Yeah, it's saving money, it's productivity, but also how people are benefiting from this, okay? Because obviously we need to take a look at how people are benefiting from these approaches. And that is the main thing that uh, we are focusing, how people are, are benefiting from this, they have a better life, and how machines can do things that we used to do, but on the other side, how humans can work on maybe some things that right now we're not able to do. So when you say that it makes life more comfortable, what do you mean exactly? What I mean by make life comfortable for people is look at the example of now how many people are doing working remotely. That's one of the benefit of this technology, okay? So imagine you have a machine and I give you a very interesting example in which maintenance is done on the machines most of the times on site. So you have to have a person present on site to look at the machine look at the, how the machine is working, okay? What are the issues on the machine? But now, for example, with AR, VR, okay? We can remotely connect. And if there's somebody at a customer site and there's some people at the customer site who are working and we have a specialist in a, in a company who can assist them using this technology, that would be a good example in which that we are benefiting. We don't have to fly in or we don't have to send a person wow. on site, mm. but through this collaboration that we can fix the machine. 
So we're saving money, time, miscellaneous expenditures. I think the, the biggest benefit seems to be time in this case. There are cost improvements. Mm. There's quality improvement. There's time improvement. Okay. And there's obviously the quality of life improvement for people as well. Let me go back to another question uh, and based on some of our private conversations, because a lot of soon to be entrepreneurs listen to the show and a lot of the, the, the wall away is about development of entrepreneurs. You seem like you had a very comfortable life before you had a good job. So what made you go into this route where you wanted to create your own business specifically and go through some of the hardships that are associated with creating your own business? So the, the entrepreneurship or what I call is the path less traveled, okay? Has been in my, in my DNA for forever. When I completed my degree in Pakistan, I moved to the US, okay, right after that. So that was one of the, the changes I experienced when I, I moved here. Then I worked for several companies and I always tried to stretch myself. I, I always tried to expand myself, get a different experience. Now, as I enter at this age of my life and I see my next 15 years of work, okay, or more, I realize that I need a set of experience in which I take some risks, I take a more entrepreneurial route, and that's one of the reasons that I, I thought to take this opportunity to stretch myself, to expand myself, to grow myself. That was the reason for this route. Because how things are changing right now, we need to develop this type of mindset in corporate, okay, in companies. When you're working in a company, you're working in a very complete different mindset in which you have a brand to back you, you have a job security, you have somebody's paying you for insurance. But when you come step on the other side of the line where there's no insurance, where there's no job security, it's totally performance-based. Mm. And that really pushes you to think things in a very different way. These six months that I've been involved in this work, I see a huge growth in myself and expansion in myself. So for this reason, I said that I think, why not take this type of experience? Okay, there's obviously there, there is risk, but there's growth as well. There's risk and reward. So that's what one of the reasons that I wanted to expand myself. I wanted to see myself in, in a different way. And I said, okay, let me try. And so far it's been, it's been good. I would not say that it's easy. It's, uh, it's challenging. There's work you have to highlight some of the challenges for our aspiring entrepreneurs. Obviously you have to do everything. <laughs> so you have to work, yeah. you have to market yourself. You have to do business development. You have to create content. You have to spend time with the family, manage your own money, ma manage your own money. Yeah. So there's all these things were, were managed by the company. The other thing is, then the minute you step away from the company, then it's you don't have a brand. You don't have a name behind you, it's you. Like you said earlier, you don't have a backing. Yeah, it's you. So now you need to build your own brand. And that's something which is very interesting for us, for me especially, to have this feeling where you're standing by yourself and there's nobody behind you, okay? And all you have is performance. And, and this is what, as we're moving forward, the trends in, in work and learning are changing. How we worked in previously, in which there is 15 years of education, then somebody who wants to achieve more, get an MBA, master's or PhD, then there's 30 or 40 years of work life and then you retire. So there's, there was a lot of consistency in this, this pattern. Now that consistency is totally disrupted with this environment in which you see that how, what Airbnb did, what Uber did, what some Amazon Netflix. did, Netflix yeah. did, some of these companies did, is they totally disrupted and Netflix 
have a huge influence of how people are, are watching TV now. Uber has a huge influence on how people are traveling now. Mm. Amazon has a huge influence on how people are shopping now. Mm. So it was, they created these new markets and it's just different. It's a different mindset. You cannot, in my view, that why is, is Sears or Walmart or Kmart were not able to recreate or are not able to create Amazon. It requires a different mindset. It requires innovative mindset. It requires a more entrepreneurial mindset. And it requires maybe a mindset where, you, where you're open to risk, where you're, you are willing to fail, okay? And, and sometimes in a corporate mindset is safety is, is paramount. Trying to sustain. Risk, yeah, trying to sustain. Yeah. Risk is need to be averse or a lot of those reasons that we see these case studies where why is Uber in business? Why is, was Airbnb in business and Marriott was not able to do that? Hilton was not able to do that it, because it requires a different mindset. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something, the learning that I wanted to have in this journey, okay? If I want to work for some more years, I want to understand that what is this mindset, mm. okay? And this is what I'm doing. I'm working the companies I'm working with. I'm helping them on the people side as well, not only from the innovation and improvement side, but the people side is becoming very important. How to engage people, how to change this mindset. That's becoming very important. So is that, is that changing the mindset? Would you, rec would you say that's the first step in order to transform? It's the first step. Changing the mindset, but also changing the hearts of people because transformation start with the heart. From the heart, it goes to the mind. How people feel in a company, okay? How people feel about the change, how people feel about the transformation. For me, it's very important that we pay attention to that. Many times in these change, organizational change or any change programs, we're totally discounting feelings, okay? We're, we, uh, we are working on the logic. We are so focused on the logic, okay? versus the feeling. We are so focused on changing the mindset versus the heart. I think in, in this new way of working where relationships are important, okay? So it's like, you know, when I was growing up and when I was back in the old days where I see that after work or after school, we would just go and sit on a coffee shop and or a chai uh, place in Pakistan. And then we would just spend hours on just talking like nonsense. But some of those relationships that we developed, now I'm realizing those relationships now, the benefits of those relationships. So the relationship is so fundamental in as we are moving forward. Human connection, okay, human feelings, human skills are so important. And that's something I think we need to understand in a corporate environment. How are we going to leverage that? And through that, how are we going to change mindset? And once we start to change the culture, then magic happens. Before that, it's just a lot of frustrations, a lot of depression. So you're mentioning the need to change hearts. You're realizing the benefits of your old connections. So I'm, I'm finding a connection that I, I find that with most entrepreneurs, that, you know, we have our quirks. Like it's not, people can't always explain why we disrupt our own comfort to go and pursue this path sometimes that leads you to more working, more headache, more frustration. But at the same time, I feel there's a ulterior motive where we want to help others. So would you say that there is something in regards to what you're doing with transformability, where it's not only about business, but it really is about transforming people, transforming the way they think, and it's from a genuine place of wanting to help them? No, absolutely. That, that is the, the intent of my initiative is to help people, help communities, help companies. So by 2025, if you look at the, the research or some of the numbers, anywhere from 75 million jobs will be lost globally. But at the same time, the good news is 133 million jobs will be created, wow. okay? So how can we understand that, how can we put people from the job lost to the job gain bucket. 
and this is one of the reason that I'm very, very passionate about. I'm working with a number of people, a large from maybe university students to professionals on mentoring. And this mindset is the talk or my work with them is to change the mindset because a lot of the people come to me, they're re really focused and they're really like passionate about what they're doing. But maybe the mindset need to be brought into the light of what this disruption. I tell you about, for example, how the work is changing. Mm. And you see there's a big movement towards gig economy or project economy, where people are willing to work on their own terms. Now, this has created, plus uh, obviously in, in the US, is, uh, the economy is good, uh, unemployment is at the lowest rate. So what is the biggest issue in companies right now? Uh, one of the biggest issues is turnover. People change jobs, okay? And or more and more people are working by themselves. Like I make a choice to work by my own. But how companies can leverage this? I think it's fundamental for companies to think about this, for companies to leverage this movement. People are wanting to do something what they like, okay? A month ago, Amazon launched an uh, initiative in which they're gonna give their people, they're gonna start their people a business for Amazon. So they're gonna give people a car, a van, some training, and they can launch their own business. So why is Amazon is willing to and start their own people to do this business? Because they understand the benefit of that. They know that people are gonna move anyway. Mm. Why not you give them the opportunity through the company and a lot of the companies, traditional companies, I think they're not getting the point. This movement in which, if you look at the how people are working in this gig economy, is at the highest point right now, okay? The more and more people are working part-time. And I think the companies need to realize, they need to understand that we need to connect with people in a different way. And also the learning is changing. The learning is used to be, I go to the college, get my degree, maybe get a master's after that. Somebody wants to be a PhD, get a PhD. And then you work after that, right. okay? Then yeah. you never go back to the school. Mm. But now through Coursera, through all these different online universities or through the universities that yep. are offering so many courses, yep. very specialized. So the model for, as I see, we are moving forward, the model I see is, I call it a T model, in which there are two portions of this T. One is the depth, okay? And the other one is the horizontal. Okay. The depth is the specialized knowledge. We need to have specialized knowledge, okay? We need to create the specialized knowledge. General knowledge is, I think, is less helpful in this environment. Specialized, if you have a specialized knowledge, if you can do something better than anybody, there's a value for that. Yeah. And the other one from the horizontal side uh, is the human skills. Mm. You need to be able to talk to people. You need to have the courage to take that step. You need to have the determination, the passion, you know, the human skills. So if you combine this, these two human skills and specialized knowledge, then there is a advantage that you have in this market. Good possibility that you'll find yourself somewhere. Yeah, you'll do better. You'll do better than most people. If these companies and these traditional corporations don't make these changes, do you think it's gonna be a matter of survival for them? Do you think it's just a matter of time until the disruption reaches them and they'll go the path of Blockbuster and Kmart and these other places? Or do you think that they're still gonna just survive on? They're already realizing that traditional business has become a commodity. And in a commodity business, you have low margins, you have high competition. It's like the example where they're like, there's a bear following you and there are two or three uh, people are, uh, are running. So in a commodity business about like, who can outrun all of them until the bear catches you? <laughs> so that's where I feel that the companies, they need to take a, a very hard look at their business models, how they are connecting with people, how they're engaging people and involving people. Because I think 
there are two sides, okay? There is a huge advantage that the companies, traditional companies have. They have established processes, they have a workforce, they have a business model, okay? So if if you can imagine, and on the other side is are these entrepreneurs, or they're like people who are starting. And the advantage that they have is the mindset, the drive to grow, okay, do more, drive to fail, okay? And then succeed, learn from that and succeed. So from that perspective, I see there is a collaboration. And I think it's happening right now. More and more companies are reaching out to startups, people. They are leveraging these, this mindset, this, these people in their companies. So that's where what I say is how people and companies can work together. Now, in terms of there's some companies going to be go out of business. Yes. There's some companies going to be sure they're going to be out of the business. Many companies have, have gone out of the business, but that is evolution, you know. New companies will come in, and this is like human race. Baby is born and somebody pass away, you know. This is, this is how this world is made up. I think companies can look into maybe different ways to maybe define themselves, to grow themselves. And, and I think it's a good time to be um, in the market, to be living right now because you have a lot of liberties. You, you can do whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. So this is just very nice. It's a good time to be. So tell us now in closing, what is Transformability doing to get ahead of the disruption, to help integrate these new skills with existing corporations, with startups? What are some of the things that you guys are working on? With companies, we're helping them. We're focusing a lot of energy on human capital development. How do you think? How do you create the vision for the new company or to move forward, move forward with? And how do we engage people? That's a big work that we are doing with companies. And obviously, with that is we're bringing some tools of improvement. Uh, like I said before, there's some tools. And then on the innovation side, we're, we're helping companies with developing innovation, developing entrepreneurship in the companies. So that's what we are doing. Now with the community and people, we are working with people in which in communities or in cities, we have some initiatives where we are trying to change the mindset, how we are thinking. And that's one of the work that we are starting to get engaged with, in which how communities are thinking, okay, how communities can grow. And that will become, I think, a key driver for growth as we move forward, the growth within a group of people. I think as a community, we need to grow. And the growth, I mean intellectually, okay, emotionally, okay, and understanding the trends, understanding the some of the mega trends that we have. So we need to understand that. We need to grow. And what I see is there's in some communities that I'm, I'm, I'm working with, people are, are still f- working in a traditional way. We need to change. That's number one. The number two in a community which is important is the synergy. So synergizing is very key in which how can you use each other. So I have a certain skill set. I don't know everything, but how can I find two or three other like-minded people who have a different skill set? And this synergy can create something more, something bigger. And I think this is something, this is what my mission is, is how can we incubate these ideas? How can we create some technology startups in our communities? And those are the two things that I'm very focused, companies and communities. And um, if we want to learn more about the company, if we want to see more of what you're doing, where can we follow you? Where can we get more information about you? The best thing is you can follow me on LinkedIn. And on LinkedIn, you can follow my uh, my work. You can see some of the thoughts that we're doing. We just launched a robotic learning center working with Kamau and OI School District. And this is the type of approach that is needed, okay? to bring, to grow our kids for the future, 
and that's just one example of, but some of this work is you can follow me on LinkedIn and you'll see some postings on it. I write regularly and um, I think that would be the best way to, uh, to work with me. Thank you so much. Thank you for making time and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Okay, thank you.